This is Module 6, SLC Device Addressing. When addressing the devices, you'll need to locate the SLC PGM terminals. On the 6800 panel, you'll see them here on the right-hand side of the keypad. On the PFC 6030, the PFC 6075, and the PFC 6200, you'll find them on the lower terminal strip right underneath the keypad. The first thing that I'm going to do here is connect a pair of alligator clips for addressing the devices. I'm going to connect a black alligator clip to the minus terminal and a red alligator clip to the positive terminal. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to the main menu by selecting Enter. From the main menu, I'm going to select option 5, System Tools. In System Tools, I'm going to select option 1, SLC Tools. In SLC Tools, I'm going to select option 3, SLC Address Program. And it's going to indicate that the SLC is going to shut down. I'm going to select Enter to shut down the SLC circuit. You have two options in SLC address programming, single device and multi-device. I'm going to start by showing you single device, so I'm going to select option 1. The first thing that it does is ask you to connect a device. I'm going to start by programming a smoke detector by using the terminals on the back and connecting to the S plus and S minus terminals with my alligator clips. Once I do that, it says that it found address 20, and I can select any address using the numeric keypad or using the up and down arrows to scroll through the numbers. I can give it any address between 1 and 127 because this is a 6800 panel. I'm going to give this address 10 and select Enter. It's now set the address for this device, so I can go ahead and disconnect that and connect my next device. The next device that I'm going to program is an SCM4, so I'm going to connect my alligator clips to the terminals that are labeled S plus and S minus on this device. When I connect the device, it's going to say it found an address, and again I can use the up and down arrows to scroll to the number that I want, or go ahead and use the numeric keypad to enter a number. I'm going to give this number 15 and select enter. Once I'm done setting the address with that, I can disconnect that device. The next device that I'm going to program is a heat detector. And again, I connect to the back of the terminals, keeping your polarity correct. Once I get that connected, I can use the up arrows to go ahead and set the address of that device. That is single point. I'm going to escape out of here and show you what multi-device is by selecting option 2. In multi-device, you're going to select the address that you want to start with, and it's going to count up consecutively for you. So in this case, we'll start with address 10, and go ahead and set Enter. At this point, it asks us to connect a device. So again, I'm going to start with my smoke detector, connecting to the terminals on the back, making sure to keep my polarity correct. I get that connected. It'll set the address, and then it will want to set the next one to 11. So I just disconnect that, and I can go ahead and grab my SCM4 module. And I can go ahead and connect to those terminals. And it'll set the address to that to 11, and the next one is 12. So it's counting up for you, which can save a ton of time. Now the next device that I'm going to program is my DCM4. And my DCM4 is my dual contact module and this takes two addresses. Now the only thing that knows that is the device because it does that and you because you're watching this video. Uh, the panel does not know that so I'm going to go ahead and, and connect my alligator clips to this and it's going to get address 12 and it's going to say the next is 13 but the DCM4 actually took address 13 as well. So when I go to my next device, which is going to be my heat detector, and I connect the terminals on the back of the heat detector, what I need to do is up arrow to uh, miss address 13. So it says it gave it address 13, next is address 14. So I just hit the up arrow, and it gives it address 14. So I know I've skipped 13 that the DCM has taken as an address. And then I can keep addressing my devices just like that, and it'll count up for me consecutively. So I'm going to escape out of there, 
and back to the main menu and that is how to address the devices through the keypad. All of the menu options on the PFC 6800 are the same on the 6200, the 6075, and the 6030. Another way to program the devices is by using the handheld programmer which is seen here. The first thing you're going to want to do is power the device on. When the device is powered on, the error light will turn on when there is no device connected. The first thing you want to do is install a detector in the base for addressing a detector. Once the detector is installed, the address of the device will be indicated by the 100s, 10s, and 1s column. To change the address, press the certain column to get to the correct address, say addressing of 10. Once those numbers are highlighted, press enter to set the address. We can then move on to our next detector. Again, snap the device into the base. It will indicate the address of the device. This device is address 35. And we can again press the tens and ones column to get the address that we want. In this case, 11. To address a detector module, I'm going to connect two alligator clips to the terminals on the programmer. I can now address a module. The first module that I'm going to address is an SCM4, a single contact module. I connect the alligator clips to the SLC terminals of this device to set the address. Once the alligator clips are connected, the programmer will indicate the address of the device, and again I can use the tens and ones column to change the address of that device, let's say to 12. And then press enter, and the device address is set. I can then disconnect everything, and to power the device off, I just hit the power button until the lights go out. For more information on addressing of the SLC devices, please refer to the installation manual. The next module in the series is Module 7, Output Configuration.